Hello everyone, this is Super Comic Girl and I am back with another video. So, um, I want to talk about events in this video and why either they produce some of the crappiest comics that I have ever had the displeasure of actually spending money on or they produce some of the better stories or better comics that uh, we're going to we're going to remember for a very long time. So, when I started, uh, when I started buying comics over 20 years ago, you didn't have events. You just had comic books that, uh, yes, I'm going to go back to the annals of time. Um, you didn't have events. You had comic books that were, in my own personal opinion, a lot more thought out than they are now. So what is the purpose of events? Oh, pr events are supposed to um, supposed to either usher a new uh, age of a particular brand of publishing company, or they're designed to tell a story that, in my own personal opinion, would definitely not be told outside of an event. Uh, let me rephrase that bit. There was the crisis on Infinite Earths. That was back... Before, I, I forgot when that was. Um, so, there are, a, there are a total of about three events that are going on right now. And that is the Edge of the Spider-Verse, which became just Spider-Man, uh, after the Edge of Spider-Verse basically supposedly ended. And then you've got the Dark Web event, and then you've got the Lazarus Planet event. Now, so, why, why are these important? Because they seem to be the gripe of a lot of people that collect comic books. And they have a lot of reason to gripe about events, and I do agree with them on this. So, I have dropped one event because the comic books that are coming out of it are just so god-awful that if you burned them, nobody would be mad at you for doing that. And we're talking about the edge of the Spider-Verse. Now, they had a really successful Into the Spider-Verse, which had Miles Morales in it. And the reason that it was uh, successful was that they limited it to, I believe, five additional spider characters. They didn't saturate the movie with spider characters. You had Spider-Ham, you had Spider-Noir, you had another version of Peter Parker, you had uh, Spider-Gwen, and you had the, uh, the Japanese Spider-Girl, um, uh, Penny Parker. So you had five characters that were sucked into Miles Morales' world. I think it was Earth-616. Um, I'm not exactly sure. And it was a fun, um, a fun uh, movie. And so what ended up happening was they're like, okay, well, we have these characters that we've established and stuff like that. We're going to introduce more Spider characters. And... The idea was that there was trouble coming and this woman, uh, was it, uh, Madam Webb, needed these, all of these additional spider people to fight this threat. Well, the threat ends up transforming most of them into, the, into part of the threat, especially Spider Princess, or, or is it, we, Spider, well, whatever. So... What ended up happening is you had um, you had a what they would call the gay Spider-Man, who uh, who ended up being bitten by the radioactive spider instead of Peter Parker, which immediately separated both universes. Um, you had uh, you had a par you had a disabled Spider Woman, um, and I'm going to say I am not against disabled disabled superheroes. I'm not. I'm not. Some of them are the 
best superheroes ever. Like Charles Xavier is bound to a wheelchair, but he is one of the most powerful mutants in the X-Men. He's also one of the best characters in the X-Men, in my own personal opinion. But he's disabled, but they make it work because he happens to be a fucking mutant. Um... You had, of course, you had uh, Spider-Punk, which has, he has his own comic book series. When you start inundating, when you start inundating um, a franchise with all these, I mean, just wave after wave of the same kind of character, I pull the plug on and I be like, I'm not buying anymore. So when issue number four came out, and this was one of the issues that I didn't get my hands on for the because of the food, be, not the food, because of the weather. Um, I didn't see it on the store shelves, so I was like, "No, nah, I'm not buying it." Anyways, I had no plan to buy issue number four because the last three issues were so god awful. Then we have uh, the dark web. The Dark Web is supposed to be an extremely, or supposed to be at least what I view it as, an important Marvel event. You've got, uh, you've got the Queen of Limbo, you've got Chasm. I am not even, I, I'm, I'm not going to do a 45 minute rant about what I fucking can't stand about that. What? The only two, only two titles within the Dark Web that are even good is the Gold Goblin and Mary Jane and Black Cat. Great. So, why in the world, on the Marvel side of things, why in the world are they taking characters that are supposed to be really good and turning them god awful with the freaking whiny issues? Simple. Because their writers don't know how to fucking write. They don't know how to write disabled spider people. They give stereotypes to people that are gay. I'm sorry. I just don't seem to understand this incessant desire to make people think that everybody who's gay is in fashion. They know about fashion. There are people that are gay that are fat. There are people that are gay, that are drunks, that are taxi drivers, that are lawyers, that are professors, that are this, that are that. Not every single gay person is in fashion. What the... Why are you making the LGBT community so one-sided or whatever you want to call it? That is my... That's my issue. Now, don't get me wrong. I like Spider Spider Man's costume. I thought it was really beautiful, but I'm sorry, but it's no, 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 no. Uh, uh. <laughs> I am not buying any more Spider Man comics that's connected to the Edge of the Spider Verse, and really the only uh, comics, the, the only two issues from the Dark Web that I'm actually going to start buying is Mary Kate, Mary Jane and Black Cat and the Gold Goblin. Those are the only two. So I'm really limiting my Marvel purchases because Marvel is turning out shitty comics. Now don't get me wrong, I loved Doctor Strange, you know, when he was the Harvest Man. Loved it. It was really, it was original. It was great. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. And I'm really glad that he's back. Um, so yeah, um, I'm really interested in the new uh, uh, what was it um, Spider Woman um, comic that's coming out, a uh, Ghost Spider. I'm really excited about Ghost Spider. Ghost Spider is a really great character that is great in her own little universe. Loved it. Loved her when she was going through the Gwenverse. Loved it. It was awesome. Really well done. A lot better than the Edge of the Spider-Verse. Alright. Um, so, I mean, you know, Chasm is a whiny little bitch. So is 
the Goblin Queen. She's a whiny little bitch. Magic, you need to come back and get control back of, uh, of Limbo. Please do that, because in the video game, she's the Queen of Limbo. Yes, please. Please come back as Queen of Limbo. I'm begging of you. Please kick the bitch out. Do whatever you want with her. I don't fucking care. Just get rid of her. I can't fucking stand her. The only original character I like is All Hallows Eve. Or, or, or Hallows Eve. She's her costume is kick ass. She can transform into these mo Halloween monsters. I like that. So yeah. The Chasm and the Goblin Queen. Leave, leave. You're whiny little people. I don't like you. All right. Let's talk about DC side. This is the Lazarus Planet event. I'm going to tell you. Okay, I'm going to tell you. I think this is before Batman became that, what do you want to call it? <laughs> um, yes, definitely before that happened. I, I'm a little confused by it, but okay, I will live with it. So, why is, La why is Lazarus Planet event my favorite event so far? Because obviously, Dark Web is a pile of shit. I'm going to try to do a little something a little bit more classy. The Lazarus Planet event looks like it's more well thought out so far than the Dark Web event. Now, there was a guy who complained that one of the new characters is a trans man. All right. Let me make this clear. Stop complaining about trans, new trans characters while you complain that you turn certain uh, characters bisexual and, and all that stuff. And that these are established characters. Please stop complaining. Okay? You get a new character, be happy with it. The only issue I've got with it is, and I told my coworker who is a trans man, I want them to take this character who character and use him outside of the event. Please let's do that. I would be a very happy person if you did that. Give him his own comic book series. Have villains. Have him kick ass. Please do that. If you do that, I'll be a very happy person. So, basically... This all started with Batman versus Robin. And you had it end with that picture with Batman versus Robin with the Lazarus Pit or Lazarus Volcano exploding. And if anyone knows about the Lazarus Pit, Rachel Ghoul uses it a lot to extend his life. He is absolutely terrified of death. Reminds me of a certain character we all hate. <laughs> um, so what is that? So we end up finding out that the Lazarus Pit was actually created for this demon to use. And so, of course, Rachel Ghoul using it is uh, not something that he likes. So what happens is he goes and he um, saturates the helm of, helmet of fate with magic from all of these magic users that he's kidnapped and has drained them of their magic. So for a moment, Batman was Dr. Fate. Now, is he going to become Dr. Fate? I've been reading that he is going to become Dr. Fate. I'm not <laughs> sure if that's changed or what. So, when we go, when I'm reading The Lazarus Planet, I'm like, okay, this is really awesome. I can tell that everything has been mapped out and everything. And, you know, yes, there's going to be people that are going to say Lazarus Planet was, was not a good comic or Lazarus Planet... Uh, Assault on Krypton is not a good comic. I happen to like it a heck lot better than the Dark Web event. 
because you've got these people that are being changed by the Lazarus Pit. It is so uh, saturated with magic that it's causing people to transform and causing superheroes to lose their powers, get them back, all this stuff. I really liked Mercy with this new like cybernetic ability. It was really awesome. I can see that DC is going to have at least an event that people can say, yeah, I happen to like that better than the dark web. And when you have like little me be like, okay, I'm going to get every comic that's come out going saying about the dark web. Uh, by the way, I'm only going to get two cop, two issues. Like, I'm not even going to buy The Amazing Spider-Man because of how bad it has been. So, you know, it's, um, it's just, it's something that me as somebody who likes a good story is saying, okay, look, the Lazarus Planet event is a much better story than, um than the dark web and that is my own personal opinion so what is wrong with events well if you don't screw up what you already reestablished then you wouldn't need to come out with a new event i think that this is a call from higher up saying okay we need to restructure the dc universe we need to make it much more exciting and better than because they're still in I mean they're they're rivals to Marvel and they I know they're looking at Marvel cells for the dark web and to the an edge of the spider-verse um, and I really think those titles are much more lower but I don't have the list in front of me but overall, I am enjoying the Lazarus Planet event a heck lot better than the Dark Web event, and I will continue to buy the Lazarus Planet comic books. Um, and I'm definitely excited about the Dawn of DC and all that. So that is my video for um, today about my problem, you know, um, and everything. Um, also, something else I want to include is... The Dark Web event is full of whiny little characters. The DC is more full of, like, strong people. There are strong characters. They're trying to find out what the fuck is going on. So, that is it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And until next time, keep reading. Bye.